Hello YouTube, it's Louise the Big Head Bookworm. Lovely to see you, hope you are well, hope you're having a good day, wherever it is you are and whatever it is you're doing. Hello! Welcome back to Tuesday Knit Group. So my name is Louise and I live just north of Cambridge in the east of England with the husband and our ten-year-old son and three cats who rule me with an iron paw. And this video is Tuesday Knit Group. It is a series of videos which I record and upload on a Tuesday where I talk about knitting and stitching and crochet and all things crafty. And um, I invite you to come along and sit and chat and knit on craft or loll on the sofa along with me because this is our knit group. This is, I'm just doing a, compl I'm just doing a de decrease stitch, this is the knit group for everyone. Anybody and everyone is welcome, whether you are a knitter, crafty person, whoever you are, you are welcome here. This is a relaxed video where we chat about what we've been up to. There's tea and coffee in the kitchen, you are welcome. I have moved seats, so you've got the whole entire sofa over there. So I have. So let's get into it. I the door wasn't open last Tuesday, and that was because we were on holiday, so we had to lock up the house. <laughs> Although, if you'd contacted me, I'd have sure to tell you where the spare key was, and you could have let yourself in. Um, but I uh, knew I tried to work out how I could I could film the video. And I could talk about my holiday knitting and crafting, but what I couldn't do is upload it because I was just trying to work out how I was going to do it. I suppose I could have gone to a library, but it would have been the right pain. And I just thought, you know, we will just have a week off. Um, I have a series of other videos which I record on a Friday, which is Friday Reads, where I talk about the books that I've been reading. And that was a very short, quick video, and I can do that on the hoof, as they say. Um, but I couldn't, I couldn't sit and chat and, and then find somewhere to upload it. We don't have any internet when we're down in the southwest, which is where we go on our hollybobs. We go down to Cornwall, which is in the southwest. We're very lucky we're able to go down there and stay in a very, very nice house. And it's we go to the same place every time. And it's just lovely, and it is just our it is our home from home. We're so happy down there. We so love Cornwall, and uh, the sea and the sea air, and oh, it's just it just makes my soul happy to be down there. So we went down there for a week, came back late Sunday. So I am still getting myself organised from being back. So this will probably will be a shorter video, shorter knit group than normal um i have read everybody's comments from the last last one but i haven't had time to look through and make sure that i've got all the answers for people so i'm not going to go through the comments this time but we will do a bumper one next week so i upload this video on a tuesday after recording it and you tell me what you've been doing and i tell you what i've been doing we have a chat so there's tea and coffee in the kitchen, there's shop bought cakes this time, haven't had time to make anything, but there's some um, hot crust buns. Of course, because we're in that season now, all the shops have hot crust buns. Mm -mm -mm. Not getting the expensive one from Marks and Spencers, although they are very nice. They are so filling, you won't have those. Probably just get supermarket ones if you don't mind. Um, lemon drizzle cake. Somebody said they'd never heard of lemon drizzle cake before. I did notice that. It's like you've not heard of lemon drizzle cake. It's basically a vanilla cake that you cook with lemon juice and lemon zest. And then you make a lemon syrup. You make a lemon syrup with lemon juice and sugar. And you prick holes in the top of the, lem of the cake. And then while it's still hot, you heat up the, the lemon juice into and sugar into a sugar lemony syrup and then drizzle it over and it soaks into the cake and it makes it just lemony goodness yum 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 i used to always do mine in a loaf tin although you can do it in any any kind of way possible do any shape but i always do mine in a loaf tin and then you just slice it 
and then sometimes people do um lemon icing on it as well it's basically cake for people that love lemons and i love lemons it's lovely you could do it with other citruses i'm sure or combinations the world is your lemony oyster in that way although that just sounds gross um i have lit a candle for us today i light a candle for us each time and each time i light it i say the, our intentions and send them out to anybody that is watching and i have lit a dark orange candle for today which is charge up our energy and give us st stimulation in some way to kind of give us um a, an energetic boost We've just had the full moon, if you're interested in that kind of thing, uh, in this area. where the, We've just had the full moon and people have a can have a reaction around the full moon. It can either make them feel um, energetically charged or it can make them feel depleted. I think everybody has their own, just as just a complete aside, nothing to do with knitting. I think everybody has their own relationship to the moon and if you are interested in energy patterns in particular your energy pattern then it's a brilliant idea is to track your moods around the moon and you might find that you see um that around the new moon around the dark moon you are either energized or you are um, find it difficult and vice versa with the uh, full moon so it can be it can be again everybody has their own energetic um, relationship with the moon you can start to see a trend and that you get find that you might get a boost around full moon now i tend to get my boost around new moon up until full moon and then i have a deep i have a darkening so i am less energetically inspired and i don't tend to start things between full and new i start things between new and full so that's just the way i work with the moons and i've worked out that that's how i work and how i work best so we've just had our full moon last tuesday full moon in virgo virgo the virgin my mum there's a picture of my mum behind here that's me and my mum you can't see it i mean just move it there she is she's got a gorgeous hat on um my mum um was a, a virgo and if anybody said virgo she's got virgo the virgin <laughs> i was like i kind of know you're not mum <laughs> as i'm your daughter um decrease stitch and um yes so we've just had we've just had a full moon virgo so i'm not going to be starting anything new i started stuff prior to that and i can continue on with stuff but i'm not going to be starting oh actually that's a complete lie i am going to be starting something new well that's interesting you see because i am starting something new and i looked at the instructions yesterday and they baffled me <laughs> and what it is let's leap right into it if you watched last last time you came and you sat down on that sofa and we had a good old chat i showed you this collection of wool i got mocked for not being able to pronounce that i don't care i still can't pronounce it believe you me my pronunciation of this would just be horrific <laughs> and um this is part of i got a big selection of wool at a reduced price I don't remember what 10 percent off or something like that to do the kaleidoscope 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 mandela by hanyan crochet i got the rich jewels yarn pack there you go um and the uh directions the instructions the pattern even get my words out um came out yesterday which is the 25th and i looked at them and she's done them it's um hannah hannah cross or han jan as she is on instagram if you go to her blog which if you go through instagram you find her blog um in her link tree and she's released the first part of the pattern and i looked at it it's description pattern in uk terms pattern in us terms for crochet and then pictures 
And I honestly, I was baffled by it, which probably is because it's after the full moon and I'm just not, I'm not quite with it. But I am going to have to give it a go because I don't want to fall behind with this. This is an eight week cal crochet along. That's what um, cal is. So you get cal as in knit along, K-A-L. This is a cal as in with a C and is crochet along. And it's using this wool. This is our centre wool. So it's all these colours. Mm -hmm. and others and it's knit in a spiral mandela which I don't have a picture of unfortunately but I'm going to ask the husband to print it out for me and then I'll actually have it written but I am going to start it I actually thought about starting it tonight um, I found I've got the right size hook and this is a 5.50 so 5.5 five and a half crochet hook it's kind of big and chunky and then we use this what does this say you should use um quite often they give instructions on the ball band as to what they suggest for a crochet hook or a knitting needle doesn't say yes it does it says 4.5 to 5 millimeter So she's gone for 5.5, so she obviously wants it to be quite loose. I am a tight um, crocheter. I tend to tight, I, I tend, with knitting and uh, crochet, I have quite tight tension, which means that my stitches are, tend to be slightly smaller than um, what the pattern agrees. But I tried using a six, and it doesn't feel comfortable in my hands. This is just a metal pony. Is this a pony? I think it probably is crochet hook um somebody suggested with my previous crochet blanket i got to the point where it was really hurting my thumb i i have got slight rheumatism in my hands only slight um but with the repetitive motion of a full blanket um doing a full line of trebles you know 300 trebles and then it just after a while i got slight pains in my my thumb and I was getting kind of twitchy thumb which I know is over I've overstretched it basically my nerve endings are not happy so the only thing I can do with that is rest and somebody suggested actually changing my hook and getting an ergonomic hook which I will then hold in a slightly different way so I have got one upstairs but I haven't got one in 5.5 so I'm going to try this it doesn't look like from the pattern that I saw the brief look I had yesterday and then was baffled by, easily baffled. Um, it doesn't look like I'm doing the same stitch all the time. It looks like it's it's all different stitches all the time, which means that I shouldn't get the same repetitive action. I think it's doing a whole line of trebles or a whole line of double crochet in UK terms, that is. I think is what is the problem for me. I think if I do lots of different stitches, I manipulate it slightly differently and I don't get the repetitive strain. But I'll see, I'll see. Looking at it, it's more the interplay of the colours that will provide the fascination and the and how the pattern grows um, rather than sheer volume of stitches, if you see what I mean. So I'm hoping that I should be able to do it, but I am going to try and keep up with the eight weeks. And so that starts this week. So I need to get cracking on this and look at that. So I'll have another go tonight to see if I can do it. But anyway, as I was saying, with a moon, new uh, full moon, I don't normally start things after the full moon. I try and wait until up until the new moon. Of course, with life, we can't just go, no, I'm not doing anything today. It's because of the moon. That doesn't really work. Life doesn't work like that. Well, my life doesn't work like that. And I bet yours doesn't either. Um, but I will, we will do our, I will, I'll give it a go. Give it a go, hey friends. So yeah, so that's what I'm, I'm using. I'll start that. Is anybody else having a go? Did anybody else look? They did different colours. This is the Rich Jewel pack. Very bright, very bright, which is what attracted me. I really like the idea of something really bright to have in the garden. But they did a blues, blues and kind of um, tops and browns pack. That looked quite nice. And then they did another pack, but I wasn't keen on that one. That was all muted shades. But yeah. Um, what else? I'm sat in a different place. I'm sat in a different place because 
um, I didn't have time to set up my big light and sitting over there which is where I normally sit it's just too dark so we've got a most beautiful sunny day here today and I thought oh it'll be great and there isn't anywhere that I can sit I, if I sit in the in the kitchen with the sun I know well, we don't all want to be sat in the kitchen do we we want to be sat comfortably for a start so I want to do it in here so we can all sit together and you've got a nice seat and you've got a cat behind you if you don't worry, just move it if you want to sit down. Um, but it, it is quite a dark room. It doesn't get direct sunlight in here. Um, and I, when I went and sat down, the, kind of the shadows were just too strong and I couldn't show the colours of anything, in particular what I'm working on at the moment. So that's why I'm sat here. I've also had my hair trimmed. I've had a, had a bit of a cut. So it's actually... I feel like it's just I've barely got any hair left. <laughs> That's what happens when you've got really long hair and you have anything cut off. You're like, oh my God, it's just so, so short. But I said, right, I'll have four inches off, which is quite a lot. And um, she said, OK, what does your four inches look like? And I said, it looks like four inches. And she said, oh, it's because some people, when they say I want four inches off, they have like... <laughs> The, than that when the scissors come near the hair they're like Ooh, just take that much but I was like no it, it had got to the stage where I wasn't wearing it down at all because it was just so much hair I still look like I've got quite a lot of hair and I'm just embracing that today I'm just embracing my my full mane <laughs> that I've got so I'm just getting my water there is tea coffee and wine in the kitchen if you want it Green tea with pomegranate, chai tea, black coffee, filter coffee, all in there, all in there. I'm just on sparkling water and my husband's just made me a coffee actually. Um and I need to I need to calm down now. Um yeah, so yes, I had my hair cut, so it's still got ooh, I've just dropped a stitch. Have I just dropped a stitch? Yes. Oh, I don't know if I have. No. Thought I dropped a stitch. <gasps> Sudden panic of dropping a stitch. I heard a, I heard a ping. Wait one second. Oh. That's funny. I heard like a ping, but I obviously hadn't done anything. Do you ever do that when you're knitting? No, nope, looks fine. Um, yeah, so what was I saying about, oh yes, my hair. So I'd had my hair done. Had my hair cut short. She used people with long hair. Have you ever had this done before? She washed my hair and straightened it and then cut it with the clippers. Now I have had my hair cut with clippers before. but That was when I had very, very, very short hair. Which people are always amazed at that I had very, very short hair. I had very, 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 very short hair where I was just, I just, they used to just do it with the clippers. I didn't, I didn't have, I had nothing. Uh, but that was in my 20s. Um, yeah, so she cut it and it's made, when I straightened it, when she straightened it, I've got most blunt edge. It looks, looks really good. But I didn't straighten it today. I just let it. Let it do its natural thang. Hope you don't mind. But then that's this group, isn't it? We're relaxed. We're natural. It's the knit, the knit group where you are always perfectly attired for it. Whatever you're, you're doing. We're always here. Um, I have been looking on Instagram for Tuesday Knit Group. The hashtag Tuesday Knit Group. You can follow a knit group. Uh, follow a um a hashtag and so I've started to follow that so that we can start posting our things so if you do anything whether you knit or not you can post stuff with your Tuesday knit group stuff which will be lovely what am I working on right at this moment so I'll show you what I'm working on now excuse me screen's gone dark I am working on this interesting thing that <laughs> looks really bizarre, doesn't it? Let me show you the original pattern. Uh, 
Home Sweet Home Cow. So if you remember from a couple of weeks ago, I said I was going to do, I'm trying to find the front page. Da 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 da, where are you front page? That's not you. It's the kimono, the home sweet home kimono. Here it is. Here it is. I've got the pattern printed out here. By Tina C Knits. Home Sweet Home, the knit formula by Tina C. There we are. That's her. So I really fancied making that. I didn't want to do her colours. I wanted to do mine in greys. And I was thinking blacks, but I actually found out I'd got quite a few dark navies, dark blues. So I decided to do it in greys, dark blue and purple. So the thing that was stopping me starting it was the colour choices. Because I was thinking I'm going to have to buy some. But actually I had a good look through my stash and I've bought one or two things. So I bought some stranded dye works greys. And then I had a look through my stash And I collected all of the different colours that I had that were greys or light blues, kind of different blues. And some purples and some pinky purples. So I used my leftovers and some um, minis that I had for Christmas in my my Christmas stocking and I put them all together can you see them oh, so here we are all different colors so I can I can actually I have actually kept all the ball bands that I have been using because these are leftovers from previous projects some of them and I kept I keep all the ball bands and all the information so I know what's in all of them so I started to do it I can't I won't go through all of them I won't go through all of them. So I started to do it. So what she suggests, and I think it's a really good idea. So the, the pattern for this, which I got off the internet, I bought it off Ravelry and printed it off. She doesn't tell you how to do that. She tells you how to construct all the different pieces and then you put it together. So this is a suggested layout. And the arrow, so the number tells you what order to print them, to knit them in. And the arrow tells you the direction of your knitting. Yeah, so it is a seamless construction. So you can make something in a seamless way by putting all these pieces together. So you kind of, it's a patchwork that you create. And there isn't a strict way of doing it. It's very much as you want with the stuff that you have. Now, one of the things that she does do is she gives you a pattern for a cowl. There we are. So she gives you that and she talks you through doing it. And she tells you how many stitches to do and how to construct each piece. So I have nearly finished that. So this is what I was doing last week. So it is absolutely just the most fun I just I was slightly concerned a with my color choices because I wasn't confident about doing my own colors you know putting so many colors together but I thought if I stick with quite a narrow palette of all colors I like and I think go well together then I can just use that I think it's narrowing it down actually gave me more options I think when I had a broad palette I got kind of overwhelmed and I wasn't confident that I would like what I would end up with but narrowing it down and knowing that I love each piece makes such a difference so you start by doing this and a lot of them are striped so you start by doing that triangle and then you add you bind off and then you pick up stitches and then you bind off and you pick up stitches and she talks you through all of it and you're increasing and decreasing because you're making these different shapes. So I've never knit a parallelogram before but she tells you how to do it and you construct your own garment. 
Now this was my first piece and I've got one seam that I'm not particularly happy with because I picked up and it, I don't like the way it looks. But that's the only one. Um, I love the different, I love the colours because they're my kind of deep greys and purples and dark blues. This was my amulet shawl. This was the left, oops, nope, that, that way, the leftover of my amulet shawl. So that's Travel Knitter. It's that most beautiful blue. Um, that purple there was from Chromatic Yarns, who's Hannah from the Corner of Craft, if you're into that kind of stuff. That's Stranded Dye Works, and that's Stranded Dye Works. So, yeah, I, you can see I've put together all different kind of colours. That's Eden Cottage Yarns. So it's been lovely. So I haven't completely finished it, but that's because I got to this stage and then I thought, no, I'm not going to make it as a cowl and then make it the kimono. One of the things that she says is what you can do is you can get to a point and then decide that you're going to continue this into a garment. You don't have to make it as a cowl. You can just use it as your test piece and see how you like doing it, which is a brilliant idea. So this is actually going to end up being, I think... I think this side of my kimono the only thing is I'm not sure about having that big bit there so in which case I might do it as part of the back <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to work it out I'm gonna to have to lay it on the floor and work it out I think so what I have started to do was follow her suggested formula for the kimono and that's what I'm doing at the moment I'm just doing one, two, and three. So I've done number one of her suggested. Make sure I don't drop any stitches. That was this triangle. And then I knit this parallelogram and I'm just doing a square. So this is a square. So it's great because I've learnt how to construct these pieces, how by simple increasing and decreasing in specific spots, you can you can make different geometric shapes and of course I did know that but actually putting it into practice is a different thing I've also got a lot better with picking picking up stitches because I'm picking up stitches all the time um that's not that's not the most square thing I've ever seen but I don't think they are going to be that's the problem with working with fabric it doesn't all go perfect but it kind of falls in different places um I'm still really pleased with it. I really am. I love the colours. These are completely my kind of colours. So yeah. So that was what I was knitting on last week. A lot most of the time. I completely addicted into doing the different shapes. And the different and I go, oh I'm gonna do a square. Oh I'm gonna do a parallelogram. Oh I've just I stopped just before I was gonna do the rhombus. Um so yeah, that was really good. This purple, this wonderful, wonderful purple yarn, I actually bought in um, Cornwall. I went to a new yarn shop, not just new to me, but you new to the the universe. It's just opened called Stitches and Cream in Falmouth. If you are ever down there or you're in that area. Go along and see. I found out about it from Perrin Yarns. She was talking about it on Instagram. And I was like, oh, I'm going down to Cornwall. I shall go and see it. And so this is... Bear with. Heather and Granite. Hand-dyed yarn from Demelza's Delights. Pelinit, 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 probably Cornwall. So it's DK sock type. It was fifteen pounds, which for DK um, hand dyed yarn is pretty good. There's only so much I can buy of it because it is quite expensive. But I got this because I was on holiday and I'd saved up and I had been saving up to go and buy myself some. And it came with this little stitch marker. So I'm putting a stitch marker on. This stitch marker tells me that I'm on the right side. This is the right side. And then that. And then this is 
I have a stitch marker on the piece I'm working on so that I know when I'm working on the piece if I'm on the right side or the wrong side. So that's why I do that's why I do that. It's a light, terrible. Sorry about the light. I have got a box light and I think in future I am gonna have to put it up. Can I move the torso? Make it any better? I don't know. Does that make it slightly better? Can't see my knitting now. But there we are. So that's what I'm doing. So that's that. Here it is in its ball. <gasps> it's a little bit lighter than that. It's gorgeous. I also bought from Stitches and Cream another from Desmelda, Demelda's Delights. This is Porth Levin, which is a place in Cornwall, which is actually pretty good. And this is kind of blues and purples. There we are, that's a better, thank you. It showed that beautifully, it was nice. I switched my arm up. <laughs> I managed to click it into the right, so that's more what the colors are. And I got this little stitch marker, boat stitch marker, which I'll be able to, oh, so that's gonna go in. This is fingering weight, and it is a lot finer than the DK. It doesn't look that much difference, but you can tell when you touch it. So I'm holding my fingering weight double. I haven't done a lot of holding yarn double. What that means is that you just hold two strands, you knit with two strands at one. So holding it double means you knit with two strands held together, um, and it makes a thicker yarn. So it makes it more, if you held two light fingering weights together, it would be about a DK. So that's what I'm finding. So I'm using some DK and some fingering weight held double. And I also bought this one. I'm not sure how much I'm going to put in of this one, but this might be an accent kind of yarn. And this is from Perrin Yarns. I do love her, her, um, her yarns. I just, I can't get enough of them. She's one of my favourite yarn dyers. And this is called Soft Denim. And she lives in Perrinporth, which is very close to where we stay. And so when I when I knit with hers, I feel like I'm I can smell the sea and you know, we always go to Perrinporth when we go down. So this is called Tweedy Four Ply, and as you can tell, it's got that kind of slightly fleck kind of speckled, well, mild look or tweedy. Tweedy four ply, 100% merino in soft denim. So this is quite a thick four ply. So I might see if I can just get away with not holding this double because it looks thick enough that I don't need to hold this double. I think it will be too chunky if I did that. So yeah, that will be going in as well. Going into my bag of delights got all these different colors in here like that's a big gray look at this oh <gasps> gonna put that in mm. but it's really good because i'm using up my my scraps of stuff so i'm using up my my small so my leftovers um and i'm really pleased about that i'm really i can't get over how much i'm enjoying this how much more confident i am about picking up stitches and increasing and decreasing and it's giving me confidence to actually design it myself for for myself no idea what it's going to look like when i finish it and i did say to the husband i'm not sure <laughs> i don't know whether it's gonna i don't think it's gonna be smart i don't think it's gonna be my smart outfit you know but it's gonna be a nice kind of I don't know. I don't know when I'm going to wear this, to be honest. Oh, do you want a cat toy? <laughs> I've got a cat just down there. She actually wanted to sit here, and I was like, no. So that's what I'm knitting on at the moment with my little stitch marker. As I say, I have been obsessed with this. Um, I think it's because you're always knitting something different and you're having to do your own thing. So that's what I've been mainly doing. The other thing that I knit on the week before which you saw me, which I was knitting on last week, was my amulet, my second amulet shawl. Let me get a picture of the glorious Helen. There we go. 
Curious Handmade, and this is part of the Shawl Society. I bought this as a single pattern. Um, so I have knit one of these before and I was knitting it a second one because I wanted a simple pattern that I could just sit and knit. I'm knitting it out of Babel Yarns and it's called Tealicious and it really is, look at that colour, it's like the colours of sea glass quite frankly. And this is how far I've got. So I have knit the first section which is all garter. I am nearly, I think I'm on my last row of the eyelet section. Now I went on and off pattern with this. I really did. I went on and off. I don't think it looks exactly like it's supposed to. However, it's an enormous piece of, of shawl that I don't think anybody's going to notice. I'd hoped to knit this perfectly and I would say the vast majority of it I was completely on pattern and then I don't know where I went wrong. I think I actually added stitches which is unusual for me because normally I lose stitches but no I added them. Um, I'm knitting this on a slightly bigger needle than um, she suggested. She suggests four, four millimetre needles, but I am using 4.5 millimetre needles. I'm knitting this on my higher, higher sharp interchangeable set, as is this. This I'm knitting on five millimetres. Yeah, this is five millimetres. Um, and that's my short cord. That's about a 24 centimetre. I can't remember what it is, but it's it's not a long cord. This is on the longest cord I have, the longest wire, and this is 100. So it's my biggest. I've got my interchangeable tips. So it has a, a bit there that you screw and unscrew. And this is 4.5. So... Um, yes, so I can't show it because otherwise it will fall off, which is my right side. That's my right side. No, nope. that's my right side. Um, I have a progress keeper of a B. And that's basically telling me which is my right side because otherwise, as you can see, I forget. <laughs> Let me see if I can hold it up without losing all my stitches. So at the moment it doesn't look anything particularly but in person it's lovely. I haven't been knitting on it because I've been obsessed with my um, kimono with my cowl and then my kimono um, and I'm at the stage where if I if I look at the pattern where where am I up to? Yes I'm about to start the rib section so I've done the eyelet section and I'm about to start the rib section. I'm on row 115. I have 337 st stitches. Um, and I'm going to have to start using a lot more stitch markers to mark where I go because I've got a rib section to do. First of all, I need to make sure I have got 337 stitches. I think I might have too many. I've got that much left of my first skein. So I need to skein, I need to wind this up into a ball. So that's a ball of yarn and that is a skein of yarn, which is a twist for people that are not familiar with this. That's a skein of yarn, which is, let me untwist it, you can see. Like that. So it's all twisted up. So what that needs to be done is wound into a ball. And so what I do is I get the husband to sit there like that <laughs> and I wind it up. Um, you can use a swift, which is a uh, wooden whirly gig, and you slit it round and then you can wind with a ball winder. And that's the quickest way to wind from a skein into a cake of yarn. Or you can, with a a swift you can just hand wind and you could wind it into a ball um, but I don't have a swift um, I keep thinking I should get one but actually I don't mind 
I don't mind sitting winding it. I find when I wind it that um, I find out what the yarn looks like, especially with this hand dyed stuff. Uh, I kind of like it. So yeah, I'm just trying to put it back in the skein. I'm not a very good skeiny person. People can do this really well. I can't. <laughs> I've done this so badly. So badly. There we are. There we are. There we are. That's so bad. Let's put that down. <laughs> you can tell I'm not a yarn dyer. That has to be the worst skeining you've ever seen or something. <laughs> Still, it's just mine. That's it. <laughs> Lord, I can't get it back in. Anyway, there we go. There we go. I shall ball that, ball that up. And that's what I've got left. So yeah, so I'm I'm kind of halfway halfway through this. It says it's just over half, fifty five percent. So that's a couple of rows, I reckon, and then I'll need my new one. But you see, I got obsessed with something else. So there's that, and that's just for me. Both of these are for me. I've also got a pair of socks on the go, which are just. I think I'm just going round and round on the cuff. And that's it. That's actually all I've got to show you, apart from one thing. One more thing. Do you want to get yourself another drink while I chat? Actually, I shall have a drink. Oh, hair. I said anything about wearing my hair down. I end up going, hair. That's my dad. I haven't... People that have been here a long time ago, they uh, for a long time, they know that I lost my mum, um, my wonderful mum, um, in January 2017, but she became poorly in September, October 2016. And we lost my dad when my son was 18 months, and he's 11 next month in April. So it's been nine years, over nine years since we lost my dad. <coughs> So that was my dad, my lovely man, with Benedict when he was a weenie whoops. So yes, yeah, so we would have that out. And then that's my oh, my mum. Me and my mum. Yes, we looked very similar. <laughs> Everybody used to say, oh God, we all look very similar. So that was my mum. My mum always wore a hat. She loved wearing hats. I cannot wear hats. My mum could wear hats. And she had a fine array of hats. That was at Hampton, ooh, Hampton Court... Flower festival. We went. My dad was very poorly, but we went and we had a lovely day. So yeah, so they're so they're with me. Sitting here I can show you this. Anyway, this is what I was going to show you. If anybody is has a, has lost somebody, you know it's a it's not a straight curve in feelings, is it? it it changes. Unfortunately, I've lost both my parents. Um, and so kind of experienced lots of kind of the, the grief pattern and the loss both times. And I thought I knew what was going to happen when my mum passed because I'd gone through it with my dad, but I didn't. I had no idea. It was like I'd gone through it all over again for the first time. Because it was the first time. It was the first time I'd, I'd lost my mum and it was the first time I was living without both my parents and I was very close to my parents um, and even now I'm two years in I still get shocked at the size of it the size of the feelings and that perhaps I'm not I think they're too big for me to still hold and still but it's, it's still day by day Sometimes, sometimes it's fine, and I go through it, and I'm I'm great. And then other times, I'm still day by day, isn't it? And I know all those people that are watching that have experienced similar things will know it. So know that if you are having days like that, there's somebody out here that knows exactly how you're feeling, and um, holds my hold my arms open to you and says, "Come in, have a hug." And you can always come and sit in here and tell me about it because. Um, that's one of the things that this knit group hopefully will will do, uh, allow people to have a space to sit and hold these feelings. So, yeah, it went a bit dark. Didn't know that was coming, but then I was sick with my mum and dad. Anyway, let me show you something new. 
That was a clumsy segue, but never mind. This is the Mr. X Stitch a Guide to Cross Stitch. So I started cross stitching just before Christmas because I got this um, kit from Hobbycraft, which is like in America, I think you have Michaels and Joann's and it's that kind of all the big crafts. It's kind of the mainstream craft place and it's you have the kind of big warehousey places. Um, in the out of um, out of city retail parks, you get all the DIY places and you get hobby craft as well. So they are able to have a wide variety of things because it's mainstream. And so I, you can pick up kits and that kind of thing. And so I picked up a kit for cross stitch, and it said with easy to follow instructions. So I was like, brilliant. And what I didn't realise, it, it wasn't a beginner's kit. It did have easy and easy to follow instructions, but it wasn't expecting you to be a beginner. But I persevered. And it was, it, you know, there's only so many things you can do with a cross, isn't there? So that was brilliant. So I was like, I loved it. And it gave my hands a rest from knitting. And it also gave me a different kind of focus because I love stitching. I come from background of quilting and hand quilting and patchwork and hand patchwork English piece um, English style paper piecing I've done loads of quilts and that kind of stuff and that was my my craft background before I got into knitting and crochet crochet first and then knitting so um cross stitch is like a really happy medium that it gives me the, the ability to sit and and stitch and produce something and it was lovely I really enjoyed it I found it really captivating and I've started other pieces as well and if you're interested in seeing them I'll show you them but um I'm still consider myself very much a beginner for cross stitch which again is lovely because then you can make mistakes and who cares because you're learning and and you're you're learning new things and so you try things and you find out you're not very good at it but you know you've only just started so it doesn't matter and it's lovely and it's it's reminded me that with knitting and crochet I can still be that beginner I can still be that person that is making mistakes I do a lot and actually it's fine it doesn't matter you just learn from it and go oh well I won't do that again or if I do that again I know how to not do that again or how to fix that this time and um it's been really enjoyable i really enjoyed it so the cross stitch has has kind of re-energized my kind of love of learning and what have you so i haven't got any cross stitch books or anything like that i've got knitting and crochet books but i don't have any cross stitch books and so i picked up this one i've been watching him on youtube i've been watching mr cross stitch on youtube and i have started to watch the other floss tubers um but i picked up this book his name is jamie charmers and it's just a re I haven't read it yet I've only flicked through it but it seems to be very much kind of you know are you into have you tried it have you tried cross stitch let's just have a go at it and his reaction to me seems to be about playing at it and how to use it and I wanted to look about how to finish things because um, I finished this piece of cross stitch and then didn't know what to do with it and so I wanted to know all the techniques of how to finish things I've actually just put it in a hoop and put it upstairs and I'm going to put it on the wall but there must be other ways of doing it and all the different uses of cross stitch and I just thought this looked like a really good beginner's guide comp comprehensive guide to beginner with for beginners um and quite a special look at that how good's that so yeah so I've been playing with cross stitch and I really like the idea of that I am I am an addict so yeah it just seems really different so it's also non-traditional um cross stitch as well which I quite like um I'm more untraditional than I am traditional with my cross stitch so yeah from all what I like anyway but yeah so that's that so I picked up that book so as I say it's Mr X Stitch Guide to Cross Stitch his name is Jamie Chalmers so that's him there so he's on YouTube. He's on the YouTube. Um, if you're interested in going along, let me just put this away. Oh, put my pattern away. Otherwise, I'll get lost. It'll lose it. And then I'll be like, no, oh, where's it gone? So there we go. There we go, dear friends. I think we're going to love, I'm going to love you and leave you here. 
you are welcome to stick around for a while. Um, don't feel like you need to rush off. You're welcome to sit around. I will put the kettle on again and we can have another cup of tea. Um, and we will, I will start uploading this video. Hello. How long have I been going on with? Gosh, yes, 50 minutes and I didn't even go and look at any of your comments. Um, so I shall look at them. I have read, I read them as you, they came in as I got to places where I could access the internet. So I have read them all. However, I will go back and then next week as well with all the comments from this video. We will, I will try and look through them and pick out which ones I can do so that I can say hello to everybody. Uh, please know that if you do leave a comment that um, I do read them all and uh, yes yeah, so please like and subscribe to the channel if you liked the Tuesday Knit Group or you like Friday Reads then please come along and uh, like and subscribe which means that more people will be able to find us more people will become part of our knit group I have thought about whether we can uh, we can try and extend this group to somewhere else I don't want to do Ravelry because there are people here who are drawing or water doing watercolours mind boggled um, or lolling on the sofa and they are not Ravelry members so I don't want to make it knitting crochet exclusive so um, I, the only thing is I'm not really on Facebook and I don't know where else we could do groups so I need to think about that um, because it would be really nice if we can extend the chat elsewhere oh hello I have a cat this is Miss Molly. They went to cat camp, didn't you, when we weren't here? You went to cat camp, didn't you? You had a nice time. You can't see her, just think, oh, she's gone now. I was about to show you her, then she's moved. I was she's just like stroking my leg. Sat here just stroking my leg. No one wasn't. I did honestly have a cat here. I was going to say something, it was even more vulgar, but I won't. Um but I'm thinking it <laughs> um yes I have to think about other ways that we can we can chat I am on Instagram um I shall leave my details below so come along and say hello and there are other people on Instagram who watch these videos and so that would be nice if we can get people talking and connecting and and cheering on people when they try new stuff like me and cross stitch uh, yeah, so this has been lovely. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've had a, a nice relaxing 50 minutes and that you are well. Our candle has burnt down, so the energy has been released. And I hope you feel charged and stimulated uh, by this lovely hour. And this has been lovely for me. Thank you so much for coming along and thank you for watching. And I look forward to seeing you next Tuesday. Remember, this is the knit group where you are never late, you are always on time, and you can wear whatever you want. This has been lovely. See you next week.